Hey guys, Nate Jantz from CMB Operations. I'm a product specialist, and today we're going to talk about the model year 22 Hagee STS product line. Talking about all the enhancements that have been made on these machines, they've been redesigned from the ground up. Everything from cab, exact apply has been added to the boom, along with a whole lot of other changes. So join me for a little walk around. We'll see what's new in this model year 22 Hagee. So one of the main additions to the Model Year 22 Hagee machine is the addition of Exact Apply. Exact Apply is a pulsing nozzle control system that allows us to control the droplets coming out of our sprayer over a wider ranges of speed and pressure than is possible in a conventional sprayer. Conventional machines have section valves back towards the boom or, or uh, kind of in the center here. As product comes out and our speed increases, our pump needs to speed up in order to maintain the proper flow and product application. Now what happens is as that pressure increases, the droplet sizes, depending on our nozzle selection, is going to change a little bit. By having exact apply, we're going to keep a constant pressure inside of our boom, then open up a PWM to let a spurt of product come out and control that droplet size and control the pressure a little more uh, closely. Okay, so with exact apply, uh, we've got two different PWMs allowing product to get pulsed out, uh, which is unique to the John Deere and the Hagee lineup that we're able to control two nozzles simultaneously or run two PWMs out of one nozzle up to 30 times per second, which allows for a really, really high level of control uh, over wider speed and wider uh, pressure ranges. The other thing that's been added with this Hagee machine is pressure recirculation. Okay, so typically on the, uh, the conventional machines, we bring product into our boom, it enters in our boom section, and all the product that comes in has to get sprayed out of the nozzles. Okay, and we've been holding back that pressure uh, with exact apply on our deer machines. But now we've got the additional option here to add boom recirculation. Instead of just feeding the section with one line, now what we're doing is creating a loop out of the entire system. A okay, product can come in one end of the boom, it's going to get distributed out the nozzles by the exact apply nozzle bodies opening up, and then it's going to be allowed to return out the other side and go all the way back to the solution tank. Okay, helping keep our product in solution, but also thinking about some applications beyond just agitation. If you air purge this boom at night or you flush it with clean water to protect these exact apply nozzle bodies, coming back the next day to prime that boom again with chemical takes a little bit and you get a potential V pattern out in the field. By recirculating this product, we can get a uniform distribution of your chemical, your product inside of this boom without having to spray a drop on the ground. The other thing that's nice about that, if you think about winterizing, traditionally when we winterize, we have to spray a lot of antifreeze or winterizer fluid out on the ground or do it very carefully. Now with exact apply and the pressure recirculation option, you can sit there and buy a higher quality uh, winterizer fluid, cycle it through the entire boom, let out just a little bit to make sure you winterize your PWMs, and then ultimately you're not putting much on the ground. And the last benefit, uh, major benefit of pressure recirculation is by adding air purge to the system, we're able to take air purge and push all this product back to the solution tank at the end of the day, end of the uh, crop, or at the end of the season. Uh, similar also in our winterizing example, we could take all the winterizer fluid here and push it back to the solution tank as well. A lot of applications with the pressure recirculation option, all made possible by Exact Apply. So really recommend this as an option. We'll have a lot more great videos coming uh, out at our plot and with some customer demos uh, with this machine in particular. So watch out for those. Let's keep walking around the sprayer to show you some additional features. Model Year 22 lineup. As we continue our tour around the machine, you're going to see a lot of things that are very similar from previous Hagee machines and also a lot of things that are different. Now this model year 22 has a 120 foot hybrid boom in this case, which means that the inner 60 feet is going to be based on steel and the outer 60 feet is going to be an aluminum frame. Okay, similar to what we've seen in Hagee machines since about 2018. Uh, when we look at 132 foot, it's going to have a similar design. Uh, it's, instead, it'll have 72 foot interior where it's steel and the outer is going to be aluminum. And the 90 foot boom is all steel. So unchanged from previous model year uh, Hagee machines. A couple other things you're going to see. Uh, a different cradle system on this machine. So when we show you the fold and unfold, you're going to notice that the folding of the boom is the exact same, but because the chassis of the machine is different, there's going to be a slightly different system for holding the booms in place, one that we think you're really going to like. Okay, let's keep going closer to the mainframe and show you some additional features of the sprayer. Up on the front of the machine here, you're going to see a lot of things that are very similar to previous Hagee machines. Our plumbing over the top is going to remain the same with our boom strainers on both sides and our shutoff valves. We've also got our lights. They've been upgraded to the LED lights, very similar to what we see on the ADAR tractors, what the Model Year 22 S700 combines are gonna see, along with the Model Year 20 and newer ADAR and 7R tractor lineups as well. 
Okay, uh, plumbing's a little different through here just because you notice there's no section valves anymore. Okay, on either side of the sprayer because we're doing all the control directly at the exact apply nozzle bodies. What we see here is the addition of the pressure recirculation option that we've got valves on both sides that allow them to open and return to tank and allow that overall agitation and recirculation of the boom. We can also spray conventionally, okay? So if we don't want to recirculate, if you're running direct injection, for instance, we don't want to inject product up here and then have it go out the boom and then go back to the solution tank and dirty up the tank. Okay, so we can spray conventionally, and in that case, our product's gonna get fed from both sides of the boom section, and then only be allowed to go out the tips and not return back to the tank. So we still can spray both ways, and that is capable here through different plumbing options uh, available on the front. A little bit more electronics up here as well to help facilitate the use of the exact apply system. And we look at our height control, we are using a NORAC UC7 system. Okay, so it's a five sensor in this case on my 120 foot boom. It's got active wing roll on it, so as we go across uh, varying terrains, the wings are gonna compensate for that because the transom on this machine is solid to the sprayer. Okay, so our boom is not going to be sitting on a pivot. We're gonna utilize the sprayer chassis to help dampen some of that uh, articulation of the boom. The boom in the model year 22 remains mostly unchanged, just some additional options and features if you select exact apply and the pressure recirculation option. Now we can order these sprayers conventional and the plumbing is going to remain really similar to what you're used to seeing. Okay, up above me, and we'll get to it in a minute, you're going to see the new cab on this machine as well. And there's a lot of changes that have gone into that. It's utilizing a very similar cab as what the John Deere X9 combines are using. Inside of the cab, we're going to have different packages available, a select and an ultimate comfort package. This one has the ultimate comfort package on it, which essentially means it's got a massaging seat, it's got a refrigerator, a uh, heated and ventilated seat as well, along with uh, additional windshield wiper options as well. Precision ag options on it. Uh, this machine does come with a 4600 display on the armrest, so all integrated technology. It's also got an embedded MTG, so we can watch codes and also utilize it for doing shared coverage or sharing our agronomic maps from here back to our operations center where either we or our trusted partners can then analyze the data and uh, also save the spray records as well. This machine does have a vision camera on it. This machine is compatible with vision row sense, uh, very similar to previous Hagee machines that had the John Deere uh, integrated auto track system in them. Uh, but again, uh, that's going to plug in where our receivers would typically plug in on John Deere machines. Okay, let's get a closer look at some of the other features on the machine before we head up into the cab. One of the major updates to the machine is going to be the lighting packages. Now we've got night spray package, very similar to what we've seen in a previous machine with the blue lights, but we've got the addition of these boom lights out on the boom looking forward so we get better visibility in front of the boom at night with a white light. Coupled with that, if you choose exact apply, the exact apply nozzle bodies each have an LED light on them. So as you're spraying, the light illuminates, allowing you to see your pattern at night all the way out to the end of the boom. As we come along the side of the machine, here's where you're going to start to notice a lot more differences. First and foremost, right off the side of the window, you're going to notice that the suspension is no longer indented into the cab window. That's because the suspension has now been moved underneath in a dual strut design very similar to the John Deere sprayers. By lowering the suspension down to the ground, now we're basically taking our point of movement from up top here and moving it down into the row. Okay, we've got a similar airbag setup as before, but we're captivating all that movement down here rather than translating it all the way up through the frame of the machine. Should create more reliability in terms of the leg supports and some of the other components down here as well. But ultimately looking for a much smoother ride, uh, you can see where some of the uh, airbag components have been moved to as well. Now the big question a lot of people have with this addition is doesn't that increase the overall width of my in-row spacing with the tire? And uh, it's a very good question, and ultimately, depending on your tire choice, isn't going to change it a whole heck of a lot. Okay, if we come over here and look at one of our rear tires, uh, this machine has 380s on it, and uh, does look like a little bit wider package, and it is, uh, but these 380 tires add about two inches to the overall width in row at hub height compared to previous model years. So not a big change. Um, but it does have a little bit of uh, difference depending on the size of tires that you select. Continuing on talking about the steering system, uh, the Hagee machines will still be installed with all wheel steer. And that's a platform on all three of the models that will be available for model year 22. The STS-12, STS-16, and the STS-20. One other change here is looking at the tread adjust. Okay, we've got mechanical and hydraulic tread adjust options depending on the model that you select. 
STS-20 sprayers are going to be compatible only with a mechanical tread adjust option. From the factory, they're going to be set for 120 inch spacing. The STS-12 and the STS-16 uh, will be factory installed with hydraulic tread adjust, but the STS-12 having the option of a mechanical option as well. As we're underneath the machine here, a couple other changes that have been made. Uh, with all the changes inside the wheel hubs, all the way around the machine and the suspension changes, it's going to raise the height of the machine by about two inches, again, depending on tires that you select. Uh, but typically, we're going to see a ground clearance of 74 inches or maybe a little higher on these, these new Model Year 22 machines. Uh, other things that you're going to see, uh, with the belly pans that we've got here in the tall crop package, they've changed the design of the system that locks the panels up. So no longer do we have the uh, little pin design systems. Uh, instead, we've got integrated clamps so we can squeeze together and drop any of our panels down. That's going to be for any of the panels up here along with the front fill option as well. Uh, so no more clips that you have to put in your pocket. All these panels do come down nice and easy and allow for good visibility underneath of the machine. Okay, if we come under here a little bit further, you're going to see some other additional changes that have been made to this machine. Some of the things you're going to notice on this machine that are a bit different, our solution pump has been moved from the back further forward. Okay, so our solution pump up here, still a Hypro designed pump, uh, really similar in capacity. But uh, what you're going to see is, is the position of the pump is a little closer to where the sump is. Okay, so should eliminate a lot of the issues we've had uh, in previous machines with priming issues. Okay, solution pumps up here. We've also moved the flow meter. The flow meter is not underneath the panel anymore. It's actually going to be off to the side that we'll look at here in just a second. Okay, if we look forward just a little bit more, there's a, some additional changes underneath the front panel with controller mount locations that we'll take a look at. Okay, looking up underneath of here, uh, there used to be a lot of controllers underneath of this panel. A lot of those have been moved and integrated into the cab itself. Okay, there still are a few additional in here, but uh, ultimately reducing it by quite a bit. Because this machine has exact apply on it, it's hard to see, but there's a controller on here, an M50 controller, where we use a wireless Bluetooth remote where we can control the boom sections on and off if you're looking at uh, identifying any blocked nozzles or just testing out the system. The control, uh, the controller for that and the wireless antenna is going to be located under the center of the machine here and actually does have really good uh, connection ability out to the outsides of the boom. Okay, so that's where that controller is going to be located and the rest of our auto track steering valve we're going to see a lot more common components to our John Deere sprayers on our John Deere tractors. Okay, let's keep walking around the machine to show some of the additional features. As we look under these panels, the one thing you're going to notice that is that the machine is a lot more wide open. So think about doing your high crop corn applications where tassels always used to settle and, and uh, kind of muck up the whole system. Now we're wide open, makes it a lot easier to clean out, power wash or air wand the machine to get it cleaned off. Under the rear panel of the machine, you're going to see the bottom of the engine, the oil pan, and also some of our exhaust and cooling components. Really nice access to all these features. Our water separator for fuel. And also have really nice access to all of our filters. All right, now we've looked underneath of the machine. Let's go ahead and snap these panels back up. All right, we've talked under the machine. Let's take a look higher on the system and talk about the solution system a little bit more. First off, you notice that the operator platform has been relocated and now we have a ladder directly up into the operator station. Along with that, the sight gauge has also been relocated and also has an option for an integrated light at the top, allowing you to see the gallons in the tank a little more readily. One of the major changes on the side of the machine here is a change in our eductor. Previous Haggy models, if you wanted an eductor, required a push-on pump. In a Model Year 22, we have the option for an eductor with or without the machine. We also have the option for an onboarding pump or not. So we have the option of pushing on only or adding an additional pump for pulling product on just like the previous models that had the eductor. The pull-on pump is going to be on the other side of the machine. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Okay, focusing on the side here, uh, a couple things you'll notice. First off, this has the eductor option on it. It's a poly eductor. Allows us to open the uh, cap up here. Uh, has capacity for about five gallons. They've increased the flow in here so it can take product uh, like AMS. We've got handles here where we can actively bring our, our solution in. We have the option of bringing in water either from the solution tank or from the clean water rinse tank. So we still have the option to segregate 
uh, the product and keeping it clean, um, but it does give us a lot of flexibility here with the eductor option. On the side of the ladder here is our fill station. Okay, we've, this is our side fill option today. Three inch side fill for the main solution tank. We've got a two inch fill for the rinse tank. And this is now the only spot where the rinse tank line is run from the factory. Moving up here on the other side, uh, we've got our hand rinse station. So not up on the operator platform anymore. We've moved it down here with the manual valve on it or you can wash your hands if you get any chemical on them or, or have anything get into your eyes. We've got a place where we can flush that and the tank is located directly above uh, where we get into the cab. On the side here is our console for the power spray system. Okay, with the redesign of the eductor and the push on or pull on options with this machine, we've got the power spray option which is going to be similar to the John Deere automatic solution command system. So we've got a keypad here that allows for control of our system from the ground, uh, allows us to run rinse cycles, turn on and off for agitation and solution pump, uh, along with utilize our eductor and other options like target fill. If we're gonna utilize the power spray system to push product down with the nurse pump, it's still going to read out the number of gallons inside the solution tank. And we also have the option of what's called target fill. So with the float inside of the tank, with target fill, I can enter how many gallons I wanna load in the machine, and the machine will automatically shut down if we're using the onboarding pump, it'll shut down when it gets to the set amount of gallons. Okay, so I can batch very easily and have the machine shut down without having to baby it and base it off of a sight gauge. Talking about fill options on these new Haggy sprayers, we've got two fill options that are available. We've got the side fill option that we looked at on the ladder. We also have front fill still available as well. Now because the operator station changed, we no longer have a factory installed rear fill option. Okay, uh, to get to the front fill, again, these clips have been removed. They're just locking pins inside of here. And our front fill arm is located up in here as well. Now it is important to note this is a pre-production machine. There will be a couple things that'll change before factory delivery of the model year 22s. Uh, but we've got our three inch front fill line up here. Uh, no rinse line or, or power lines to fill totes off the front currently. Okay, so three inch front fill up here. Just as easy to put our system back into place and utilizing the integrated pins up here we're ready to go. No more pins we need to pull out of our pocket or drop on the ground. Continuing to look at the different solution options on our machines, this is the onboarding pump on this new Hagee sprayer. Instead of having it tied under the eductor like it was on previous models, we now have the option of getting with or without an eductor and with or without this onboarding pump. A little more cost effective for the guys to customize machines the way that they want and the way that they utilize them. Okay, our main solution strainer is going to be up behind the pump here as well. And as we follow it forward, our flow meter is going to be located up behind here as well. We're still using an Arig mag meter, so no moving parts internally, uh, but it's going to be located here on the side instead of on the bottom of the machine uh, where it was before. Part of the change of the power spray system is how the flow meter and the pump interact with the solution system to get to our target rate more quickly as we're increasing and decreasing our speeds uh, along with exact apply and the pressure recirculation options. So there's a lot of things that play into it, but the moving of components is going to help us drive to a, an accurate rate more quickly. Hey, let's walk around and take a look at the service station and then head up into the cab to wrap up this walk around. Now due to the changes in the operator platform, an additional system had to be added so that we could get up and service the engine since we didn't have a built-in platform already. Okay, so we've added this operator station platform back here which is not needed on a daily basis other than to check oil and fuel. Okay, the ladder pulls down into place, then we can go up top and look at some of the additional features up here. Once on our operator station, a couple things to point out here. First off is our battery box. Okay, that's been relocated, it's no longer underneath of the hood, which also relocates the battery disconnect, which is directly underneath of this box. Above the battery box, here we can see where our DEF and also our diesel tanks are located for refueling. On top of our platform here to check coolant, it's going to be underneath of this forward hood. There's a latch on here very similar to our S700 combines. I can open it, lift it up, and my coolant's located directly inside of here. There's also a stopper that's going to stop that from coming back down. Also located here is going to be our air filter. 
Located by the def tank, you're gonna see the hydraulic reservoir okay, with a sight gauge on the side. Also up in this upper panel is going to be where we fill our hydraulic reservoir. To check engine oil, it's gonna be underneath the side panel here. Two clips. We can open it up and this panel will come right out. And our dipstick is going to be located right here in the side of the panel. Now the final thing to point out on the back side of the service station here is getting into the back panel. Now on previous Hagee machines, this would tip back with an electric actuator. In this system with the redesign up here, there's now a latch located under here and this back swings away, allowing me to get to the radiator fan, which is reversible just like before, and then also to get to our air cleaner filter along with the backup camera and the backup alarm. we've made our way around the outside of the machine. Let's go take a look up inside the cab to look at some of the additional features and changes that have been made in this model year 22. Inside the cab of this machine is where we're going to see a lot of differences over previous model years. Again, we're using a common John Deere cab. This is shared on the X9 Combine with a few little differences, obviously to make it a little bit more like a sprayer. As we sit in the cab, the biggest thing that's always been unique about Haggies is visibility, right? Having the front boom, being able to see our tips, being able to see our boom in action. Similar options, right? No change there. The boom hasn't moved. Having the boom out front, but also now moving the suspension from the top of the leg into the row also increases our visibility as we look down the side here where the suspension used to be located. It's a little more visibility. We don't have the bump out in the door anymore, uh, giving a little bit more cab room as well. The, the cab on this machine, we've got two options. Again, a select and an ultimate package. This has the ultimate on it, which provides for heating, ventilated, and massaging seat features. It's also an air ride active seat as well. So a lot of different features integrated into this cab make for a really smooth ride, let you operate long hour days uh, day after day throughout the application window. As part of this new cab, the door latch has been redesigned. So we started the machine up here. Now if we pull the door closed, I don't have to slam it hard. If we look close at the latch, it's got an auto tightening mechanism which is going to seal the cab automatically. One of the main differences inside the cab here is the change in the Hagee display. Uh, what used to be on the armrest of the older STS machines, now in the model year 22 is getting moved up into the corner post. Still contains all of our major functions as far as the machine itself goes. Okay, we can turn on our lights. We can adjust our tread. Look at our engine settings, speed settings, reverse our fan, and adjust uh, all from the corner post display here. We also have a corner post that looks very similar to our John Deere machines, where we're looking at RPMs, our speed, what gear, fuel level, coolant temperature, and oil pressure as well. So kind of a blend of both the Hagee and the John Deere um, utilization of, of displays, uh, but allows for that information to all show up very quickly and easily. Now if we look down here into the 4600 display, very similar to all other John Deere platforms, again with the addition of Exact Apply. So we have the Exact Apply set up on our machine, uh, our map icon here showing our Hagee sprayer. We can control manual rates or automatic gallon per acre rates as well. Now if we go into our menu and go into our pur purge, prime, and reclaim, here you'll notice a new option that most John Deere machines and Hagee machines have never seen before. Okay, reclaim allows us to push that product back to the solution tank like we talked about when we were around the boom. Other thing that we like looking at here, with our boom system, we have our pressure recirculation option. As soon as I turn that option on here and set my pressure, that's going to start the recirculation inside of the boom. So if we're going from an air purged, cleaned out boom, we're going to go spray. Uh, we can go ahead and turn our solution pump on, turn pressure recirculation on, and give it a few seconds for that air to get worked out of the boom. It'll get pushed back to the solution tank, and we'll have a nice uniform distribution of product throughout our boom. 
Not much else to talk about as far as a Hagee specific machine. The 4600 is going to be very similar to John Deere sprayers and tractors uh, with all the applications that are available for it. Notice that our hydro handle has been redesigned. Uh, this is going to match what is inside of our John Deere sprayers and in John Deere combines. So very common platform that we're seeing here. Our master spray button here, the yellow button. And what the big change is here is to fold and unfold the boom. We no longer have the switches on the side console like older Haggies had. Uh, we are now utilizing our transom up and down buttons here, along with a customizable button here in the back. So in order to fold our setup, I'm going to hold the button back here and hold up, and that's going to automatically fold my boom. Also on the side here, I can control my tips up and down, right and left. We've got a headland management function, along with our auto steer resume, and our NORAC boom height control resume, all on the side. Looking at the buttons on our command arm here, similar to our John Deere sprayers, we've got our solution pump enable, agitation enable, rate selection, so we're on manual pressure now, or we can go rate one, two, or three, which is predefined in the monitor. If equipped, we can turn on our fence row nozzles left and right. And below that, we have exact apply controls, which you'll only have if you have exact apply on your machine. Other buttons on the side here, we've got our our control for our engine throttle, low and high, with increments in between. But it's important to note that the Hagee machine is equipped with command drive and had auto throttling before, uh, so we don't need to touch the throttle unless we're manually throttling up to control agitation or get enough hydraulic flow uh, to warm the machine up. Our road transport switch is, is now located here, similar to the icon and uh, location of transport switches and other John Deere machines treading in and treading out icons, raising and lowering the ladder, and then also here's where we can enable and disable all-wheel steer. And below that, finally, is our park brake. Other icons in here in the middle and button, other buttons here in the middle, we can control the volume of our radio, forward and backward track, we can mute it, we can answer phone calls with Bluetooth or with Apple CarPlay, we can also hang up calls when we're done, and control our HVAC system over here. Our light controls are on the bottom, our four ways, our transport lights, and uh, our high and low and also our beacon lights are available here on the side as well. To control the speed of our machine, we no longer have gear shift buttons on the side. Instead, just like the John Deere machines, we control our speed with the scroll wheel on the back side of the hydro handle. We can scroll it up to go faster, scroll it down to go slower, and then we control it by going forward and backward with our hydro handle, just like any other hydrostatic machine. Our corner post is also going to display this targeted speed that it's going to try and achieve with the hydro handle pushed all the way forward. That's a quick walk around of the brand new Model Year 22 Hagi STS-16 machine. These new Model Year 22s are available in 1,200, 1,600, and 2,000 gallon capacities. The STS-12 is going to have a 300 horsepower engine with 330 horsepower peak. The STS-16 and STS-20 are going to have the dual turbo 9 liter engine and put out 400 horsepower rated uh, up to 423 horsepower at peak. Uh, again, similar capacities of the other 9 liter engines that we've got available on the market today and a uh, lot more information to come. We're going to be running this machine around the country all summer and we'll be taking it out to our plot in Mitchell, South Dakota. It'll be available to view at Dakota Fest in Mitchell as well, along with all over CNB locations all summer. With CNB Operations, I'm Nate Jansen, committed to being your dealer of choice.